2022 has been a rough year for the Disney Cars diecast mainline to say the least. We've only gotten five technically new releases so far, those being the NASCAR Lightning McQueen with new rims, I guess, Rowdy Revan Bush, Bubble Wheelhouse, Mater with working tow hook, and then Jay with virtual reality headset. So Keith Cohn here. You are a sight for sore eyes. I am beyond thrilled to have a brand new character, let alone a brand new character from the first Cars movie. I just have a special attraction, lots of nostalgia for the first Cars film. I like it better than Cars 2. I like it better than Cars 3. So when we get a new character from the original film, I'm excited. Like when they did Derek Williams and Sarah Wilson at the end of 2021, that was special to me. I like these ones more than just, I don't know, another retro racer, like Dewey Cone Rod. Like those are nice, but I don't know. I kind of like this typical SUV. It gives me Final Lap 2010 vibes when they did characters like Milo, who was another just background character that just looked like any old car. So I'm a big fan here of Keith Cone, and let's just dive right into the review. Now, he is actually in case H, so we're a little ahead of schedule here. Things are getting a little wonky, so buckle up. I will be unboxing case G, hopefully within the week, and then hopefully next week I'll unbox case H, which is the birthplace of Keith here. And so it's going to get a little out of order in terms of like the videos and all that stuff, but I want to get this one ahead of time and review it because I am that excited. Like that should show you guys like, yeah, Disney Doc is really happy for this new release and so he bought it ahead of time. And yeah, let's just dive right in here. Now, this is not the first time we've seen Keith. He actually was leaked from Thailand a few weeks ago. It wasn't that long ago, along with a Cars on the Road Lightning McQueen. So it's kind of odd that they were leaked together because it's very clear that they are not being released together. That Lightning McQueen will not be released for a few months, most likely. But it was kind of odd that they were revealed together. I posted on my Instagram account. I love his artwork. He looks great, very happy. Very similar to how he looks on the actual die cast. Love how he looks on the Red Riders packaging as well. On the back here, well, of course, it says Asti and Cars. Nice job. And we have a bunch of other Cars characters, except for Bruce Miller, who obviously they think, they think they're actually referring to Winford Bradford Rutherford here, but that is actually a different RPM racer than the one they released. And so keep that in mind, they are not doing Bruce Miller this year, but rather Winford Bradford Rutherford. So you have Marlon Clutches and McKay, Artie, this is a new one, Yellow Hydraulic Ramon with the paint gun. So this guy was actually released in 2020, or actually it was late 2019, in like case Y or something. He was in one of those last cases for 2019. I think it was like right before Randy Lawson and the shiny wax tractor. So they'll be bringing him back. Then we get our first Thailand variant of Brad Windmiller and Dexter Hoover with checkered flag. And then Kathy Copter will also be back. Little unfortunate because she was just released last year from Thailand already. All right, so I'll be right back with Mr. Cohn all opened up. Right, so before we dive into his review, I want to show you guys, of course, where he appears in Cars. And this also directly ties into a little known fact about Keith. And that is his original code name from Mattel that they gave him in basically early developmental stages. And that is Camera Hog Fan. Everyone at first was like, what does that even mean? That doesn't make any sense. But now seeing where he appears in the film, it actually makes complete sense. And I cannot believe it took us 16 years to actually discover this kind of cool implementation in the movie that there was a fan at the Los Angeles International Speedway during that three-way tiebreaker race between these three absolute legends up here that was trying to get into the view of the camera. Like, yeah, obviously that's going to happen. Like there's a camera shot pointed at a bunch of fans in the stadium. You want to get in that shot. You want to be on TV. And Keith knows what's up. He knows what's going on. But unfortunately, he was a couple seats off from the prime spot. 
So he's trying to get into it, and that's exactly what he's doing, so I love that. And yeah, he's hogging the camera. He's trying to hog the camera, at least, and so that's super cool. I'm glad that we have finally discovered what all of that meant. And yeah, now if I remember correctly, he kind of was coming in layer like this, and so I'm not sure. I need to check the movie. Like You guys will have seen the screenshot, but I hope his expression is kind of accurate to how he looks in the movie. You'd think he'd be looking more like this way, but who knows? We will have to take a look. Now, this might sound a little weird, but I love how open his mouth is. <laughs> I like how detailed it is. You can see his tongue in there, both rows of teeth. And like, it's a deep crevice that they did for his mouth. It's like a Disney store mouth. All, or I should say most of the Disney store cars, like Lightning McQueen's, or especially Mater's, like they have deep crevices for their models. And so this is kind of similar to that, something we've never seen before. But I do absolutely love that he doesn't have a mouth play. I'm so glad we're out of that phase. Just one full metal piece makes it look so much cleaner, smoother looking. Like, I mean, at some of these cars we're going to compare them to, you know, they all have like, I guess this Chuck Cho Cables here does not have one. Or does he? No, he does. Yeah, he has a mouth plate there. You can see the crack all the way around. You know, all of these guys, released during this time, have those mouth plates, and sometimes they still do now, although it's definitely less common. But yeah, I'm happy that he does not. Headlights look pretty good. Now, my only complaint about this guy is the white space of the eyes. Like, they look like there's a little blackness there. Like, there's a little grain in the white space, which... Might be hard to see on camera, but you'll notice it in person. It's not a pure, clean white like you might have like on Milo here or Kit Revster, right? There is some black grain in there, some lining. You could definitely see it on this side, like kind of around the eyes. So that's very interesting. Not a huge fan of that, but it doesn't compromise the release in any way, shape, or form. I love these rims. Like these are classic Cars 1 rims right here. And I'll show you guys some other ones like this in a couple moments here. But another reason why I'm just such a huge fan of Keith. He's got these black plastic side view mirrors. He's got the roof rack on top as well, which is awesome. This will be a great car like if you do stop motions or something like that. Now I must say... I am a little disappointed that the taillights here aren't painted, although I would not be surprised if mine's in air. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Hmm, it could be in air. I'm gonna have to check right after this video, although I doubt, I think somebody on Facebook actually got him today as well and opened him up. So I'll check that and I don't know, maybe I'll put a little clip like right after the end of the video saying like if it's in air. If it's not in there, I won't say anything. But yeah, I'm a little disappointed that these backlights aren't painted. That kind of stinks. But hmm, I really could be like, I don't know. I'm not going to be bold enough to be like, oh yeah, that's an air. But like, I would not be surprised at all if mine's an air. In which case, screw me for opening it up. I don't know. I wouldn't have checked that. I can't bash myself too much. Anyways, his license plate reads KYT49. I can't read the text above it though. It's too blurry. It definitely is the same kind of license plate as on Chuck Cho Cables, though, which we could read because it's clear. Oh, yeah. Something gap. Hold on. Let's see if I could bring it up to my face and have any better luck. Ring gap, I think it says. Yeah. So these guys have the same exact license plate, which is kind of funny because they're the same model as well for the most part. But different numbers, at least, thankfully. Right? So that's pretty cool because, you know, like other license plates, like they are different, like they're from different regions. So I guess Chuck Cho Cables and Keith Cohn live around the same area. Highly coincidental. Now, although this guy doesn't have a mouth plate, he actually has this little bumper plate here. You could see this bottom plastic portion is a different piece from the main metal body and it's plastic right there, right along there. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, better to have like, oh yeah, right here too. It's kind of interesting, like these sideboards are different pieces. But yeah, it's better to have it there than at the mouth. So very good, very good. Let's check out the base here. Made in Thailand. R13A, meaning he was made during the 13th week of 2022 at the A factory. 
feel like it's so pointless to always say at the A factory because it's never going to say B. It's not like there's going to be a B factory ever. So kind of pointless to say that might stop. But anyways, now let me compare him to a couple other similar models. Now these are technically like all the same. Like they really should all be the same model, but there are certain things that make them fundamentally different. For example, Keith's mouth here, you can see how low it dips down and how it's shaped around his mouth. That makes him a different model from like Chuck or Van, which is actually pretty cool because these are like very standard. Like that would be the same length and height if it were a real car that wasn't alive. Same thing for Chuck, but Keith, his is longer, dips down lower because he's a animated lively car that's smiling gaping smile now of course van has like probably a little attachment in this roof for the suitcase whereas chuck has holes for the headset so yeah there are things that make them a little different but fundamentally or i guess i should say conceptually they are all the same model but yeah it does look odd that his headlights or taillights there aren't painted again Really makes me think I have an air. Could be wrong though. We will see. But yeah, you can see that his rims are the exact same as Vans over here. They just are silver instead of gray. They are different, albeit similar to Chuck's. I have another guy here to compare him to, and that is Leroy Traffic. Again, similar rims across the board. And another similarity that we have going on with Leroy are these black dots that are in these back windows here. So you can see that Keith has the three black dots in the window themselves on both sides. Leroy has one in the window, two on the bar here on the metal. Van just has the two black dots on the bar, not on the window at all. So very interesting. I don't know what the significance of these dots are or if they have any, but let me know in the comment section below because I've seen these like on a lot of cars before and I never know what it means. Like here you have the 2013 version of Chuck Cho cables that was customized. You guys saw this in the 12 days of Christmas in 2021, but this is like the 2013 variant of Chuck Cho cables and they put all three dots in the window there unless my guy painted them on which is actually the customizer might have painted them on oh my now i sound stupid now yeah he definitely just painted those on which is good for him <laughs> i would never have thought to do that but yeah chuck joe cables just has those dots there on the bar again and it looks like keith kind of has dots on those bars as well they're just not very profound Eh, definitely not there, but possibly there. Hmm. I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time talking about dots because who really gives a crap? All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Pretty sure he appears next to like Timothy Two Stroke, Milo, Kit Repster. They're all like in the same part of the stadium, I think. I don't know. They are all at least in the stadium, that's for sure. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of this new release? The first technical new character for 2022. You could call Rowdy Revan Bush a new character, but I mean he never appears in any of the movies, media, shorts, whatnot. So I like to think that this is the first new character of 2022, and I'm very happy about it. It's got Final Lap written all over it. So many of the cars released during that time were just basic cars. I mean, you had the old ones like Derek Decal's Dobbs and Timothy Time Zone Truecoat, and then you had more modern ones like Valerie V8, Milo, Gianni, Jamie. So yeah, super happy about Keith here. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time for another video. Bye now. Okay, I know I said I'd only make a little clip at the end of the video if this ended up being an air. It wasn't, and I still wanted to clarify that this is not an air. All of the Keith Cones do not have painted taillights, which actually really kind of sucks. I'm really surprised they did that. I think it's an oversight on Mattel's part. And I also wanted to say that if we didn't know that he was originally coded as Camera Hog Fan, I don't think we would have found where he appeared in the movie because that's very obscure. And when I was 
doing the editing of the video and all that, it's not like he protrudes in the scene that much. Like it's a very obscure, very peculiar part in the film. And it's kind of an Easter egg. The fact that we found out where he appears is pretty remarkable in my opinion. So anyways, that is all now. See you later.